you may hear bad things about Philadelphia, but brewery town, fish town, neighborhoods, Northern liberties, uh, worth a visit. Uh, you should be, should be safe. Hello, my ethereal friends of the internet. It is me, Dr. T, back with another episode, another trip out into that playland that is craft beer and good music. And tonight, our theme is when wacky shows that it's truly nearly incomprehensible genius. The beer we're going to be having tonight is from Evil Genius Brewing in Philadelphia, PA, the Fishtown neighborhood. Uh, been there. You may hear bad things about Philadelphia, but Brewery Town, Fishtown neighborhoods, Northern Liberties, uh, worth a visit. Uh, you should be, should be safe. But, this beer, this brewery, quirky, fun, different, and as their name implies, they are geniuses. But tonight we're drinking something called Purple Monkey Dishwasher. It is an American porter, weighs in at 6.7% and 33 IBUs. And here's what Evil Genius has to say about it. Do you like chocolate and peanut butter, but hate all that pesky chewing? Give your teeth a vacation with our rich, full-bodied chocolate peanut butter porter. So this is an American porter with chocolate and peanut butter. And let's see what we're working with. It's a beaut. I've been letting this warm for quite a while. It is probably about 50, 55 degrees. So it's pretty, pretty warm, which you kind of want to do with these darker beers, especially more flavorful ones, just to coax more aroma and flavor out. As you can see, it's, uh, well, you can't see, but there you can kind of see towards the bottom. It is actually pretty darn clear. It's just very dark. Uh, has a nice amber color around the edges where the light can get through. Hua. You get chocolate, you get peanut butter. Getting a little bit of vanilla. Almost like that smell when you walk into a bakery. Um, but not just like any bakery. Bakery that does like a lot of cakes. like a, Almost like a buttercream frosting smell. Mm. <laughs> Lots of peanut butter. Nice, rich. The chocolate notes definitely are sweet chocolate, not like a dark, bitter chocolate, more like a milk chocolate. Uh, Mouthfeel is medium. There's a slight perception of creaminess, but that's probably just the chocolate notes tricking your mind into thinking it's having chocolate, which is generally creamy. But the mouth, the Mouthfeel, the body is moderate, not super heavy, not real viscous in the mouth or chewy, but definitely decadent. You get that roasty peanut flavor lingering way into the finish. Long, long finish. Leans dry. But 
really tasty. Just so well executed. Now, before we get into the artist, uh, I want to level set anybody who might be thinking uh, that they found something to get angry about and try to cancel me. Yes, this beer is called Purple Monkey Dishwasher. Where does that name come from? That name comes from, depending upon uh, which source you believe, uh, it either comes from the description used, often used in a when describing the game uh, that is alternately called Telephone Game, Broken Telephone, Whisper Down the Lane, Gossip, Grapevine. Uh, it's essentially that game you play where you get a line of people together uh, and the first person whispers to the next person in line some secret message. And they pass that message down the line and then see what they end up with at the end. Now, that's either the origin of it or uh, the origin, or at very least, the broad popularization of the particular term Purple Monkey Dishwasher uh, is from The Simpsons. Now for Operation Strike Make Go Longer. You know, I heard Skinner say the teachers will crack any minute. Skinner said the teachers will crack any minute Purple Monkey Dishwasher. We'll show him, especially for that purple monkey dishwasher remark. Yeah. Somehow, purple monkey dishwasher gets added at the end. Uh, so, that is the reason this beer is named this, and the reason I am pairing this beer with this particular artist, who, by the way, is a frigging genius. During his life, put out 39 albums, eight of which went gold, four platinum, six double platinum, one quadruple platinum, and hang on, I got to look something up on the internet. All right, I have found it. One tread a couple platinum album. Uh, and for those of you who would probably have to look that up online like I did, that means 13 times. He put out one album that went platinum 13 times over. Huge, just huge. The artist we're pairing with this is Prince. And not just any song. We are going to be looking at, in its entirety, his Super Bowl performance from 2007. Let's check it out. Beloved, we are gathered here today to get through this thing called life. Oh no, let's go! You don't lie. We're believing in. Take a look around. At least you got friends. So come on, lady. No friendly word. Picked up the phone, dropped it on the floor. Was all I heard. Bring us down. Oh no, let's go, let's go, pray. 
I never meant to cause you any sorrow. I never meant to cause you any pain. I didn't want to one time see you laughing, babe. Only want to see you, see you laughing, yeah. In the purple rain, purple rain, purple rain, purple rain, purple rain. That's all right. Come on, y'all. Purple rain, purple rain. Oh yes. Don't it feel good? Only wanna see you, see you. Can I play this guitar? Genius, just utter genius. If you don't like Prince, I I feel bad for you. But that was just an amazing performance. That was easily the best Super Bowl halftime performance ever. Fight me. I mean, you saw the songs that he touched on during that. Come on. Queen. Credence. A lot of people uh, associate all along the watchtower with Hendrix, and he actually does really uh, invoke uh, the Jimi Hendrix guitar solo in his solo uh, during the Best of You part, which was Foo Fighters, but all along the watchtower was actually a song written by Bob Dylan. And same thing with Proud Mary. Uh, that was Creedence Clearwater Revival, but probably the most popular version of it was by Ike and Tina Turner. But that was just an epic, epic performance. Stunningly good. It's had a ton of success. I mean, 39 albums uh, during his lifetime. There's a number of posthumous. Uh, actually, when he sadly died from a fentanyl overdose he had tons of actually finished albums and up to 50 
completed music videos unreleased uh, in his vault. Now, the estate has been releasing some stuff since his passing in 2016, uh, but there's rumored to be tons more. Uh, he sold over 150 million albums worldwide during his lifetime, making him one of the most successful acts ever. He has won uh, Grammys, uh, the Grammy President's Merit Award, the American Music Association's uh, Awards for both Achievement and Merit, uh, Billboard Icon Award, uh, an Academy Award and a Golden Globe for his acting. He was inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2004, uh, the UK Music Hall of Fame in 2006, uh, the Rhythm and Blues Hall of Fame in 2016. He was a double inductee uh, on the Black Music and Entertainment Walk of Fame in 2022. Uh, he's just he's he's just amazing. So uh, <laughs> that show was epic, and that show was live. Uh, a lot of people, um, especially in more modern era Super Bowl halftime shows, will lip sync, uh, not. Prince, not Prince Rogers Nelson. He uh, did that all live. He had four guitar changes uh, playing electric guitar in the pouring rain. It's actually a funny story. Uh, that day, uh, the pr producer of the uh, show, Don Mishner, saw that it was torrential rain. The the Super Bowl that year was in Miami, and it was just one of those days where it's just pouring down rain. Uh, and it was going to last that way all night. The rain, you know, was going to continue straight through the game. And uh, he was worried. He was like, we're going to have to do something. We're going to have to lip sync or something. Uh, and he's like, get Prince on the phone. And he's telling Prince, look, uh, it's raining r really bad. Uh, and Prince Prince's response was, uh, yeah, it's raining. Can you make it rain harder? And he just killed it. And the rain was just perfect. Obviously those lightning strikes, uh, at the beginning were post-production added for the, the Super Bowl, but that rain was real. That rain was pouring down. You had dancers and in six inch heels on, uh, a very smooth, slick, stage uh and they just crushed it all the way around uh and nobody got um electrocuted <laughs> another funny aside a reporter once asked uh eric clapton how it feels to be the best guitarist in the world and eric clapton's response was i wouldn't know you better go ask prince and i think he's right prince multi-instrumentalist could do it all um and did it all he was fantastic and and gone too soon but if you like what i'm doing here give it a thumbs up subscribe and when you subscribe hit that notification bell because i'm putting out new content all the time and i would hate for you to miss any of it but more importantly leave me a comment let me know what you think let me know if there are beers or songs or music genres that you want to see on this channel. Let me know how wrong you think I am about something. I love to discuss things nicely. But until we meet again, my dear friends, remember to live like it's 1999.